It's another edition of the UTPA Baseball Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg, and this man is Manny Mintrani, <laughs> head coach of the UTPA Baseball team. Hello, Jonah. Good to be here. Well, Coach, you've had a pretty good couple of days. You've taken three out of your last five games since uh, the last time we spoke, uh, including a doubleheader sweep up at Texas A&M Corpus Christi yesterday. It's the first time you've swept them in a doubleheader or won a season series against your geographical rival since 2012. It's got to feel good. Yeah, well, you know, every time you win, Jonah, it feels good. Um, but uh, it was fun um, yesterday. Uh, the you know, first game was nip and tuck the way that we won it was uh, very unusual. Um, and then the second game, uh, we kind of continued putting on the pressure um, and we scored seven runs. So um, it, was, it was a good day for Bronx baseball yesterday. Does anybody have a bigger week than Clayton Haltom? He gets his first career hit at the Division One level on Sunday, and then he picks up his first Division One win on Tuesday with the best performance of his career. I agree. It, it was the best performance of his career. Um, and you know what? Clayton is the uh, the opposite of, uh, of Logan Landon. Uh, we bought in Clayton as an outfielder, um, but he couldn't hit. Um, so we converted him to a pitcher, and yesterday he did a great job for us starting the game, uh, game one in which we're, uh, we won 2-1, to one, uh, went five strong innings. I mean, really his best performance by far since we've had him. Um, and base hit to boot uh, over the weekend. Um, that, that just shows you batting practice is uh, overrated because he hasn't hit batting practice the entire year. And he gets up there, <laughs> two strikes, and he lines one out to center field. So BP is definitely overrated. <laughs> Altum uh, just allowed the five singles, two walks, two strikeouts. One of those strikeouts with the bases loaded to end the first. He got double plays to end the fourth and fifth innings. What was he doing so well out there? The biggest thing with him, you know what, he was uh, really, they weren't getting good swings on him. Um, I mean, he's got a good arm. Uh, he goes 87 or 91. Um, but his breaking ball uh, was good. Um, and he was keeping the ball around the plate. And when you're throwing, you know, you have that, that velocity and that heavy ball. Um, guys would, would uh, definitely swing when balls are around the plate. Um, but he kept the ball down. He was around the plate with all these, uh, uh, his pitches. And he made pitches when he needed to. Like, as you mentioned, to end a couple innings, he uh, induced a ground ball double play. And that's what you have to do. Um, and if you're a pitcher, there's going to be times in, during the game that you have to make big pitches. Um, and he was able to do that yesterday. Um, and, you know, two runs is not a lot. Um, but we were able to win uh, the first game 2-1. to one. Yeah, bullpen held it. Uh, Alex Henson retired the first seven batters he faced, three scoreless innings. Alex threw the ball well, um, and I think it's a good matchup. You know, they, they were seeing 87-91 uh, from Holton from the right side. Then we bought in um, Alex, uh, which is 6-4, 6-5, really, really good tilt. Um, and then Matt Rigby came in, um, gave up uh, the first hitter, hit a home run, but then retired the next uh, three guys. Uh, to give us the win. So it was, it was a good effort uh, on our pitching staff. Um, and a lot of credit to uh, Michael Harrison, uh, you know, um, Huck. Jacob Huckabee couldn't catch either one of the games. He's had uh, a sore knee, so he was out. Um, and Mike stepped in and did a really, really nice job for us for 18 innings. Um, and in the first game, especially, uh, we sui uh, suicide squeezed with him in the second for the first run. Um, and then we did the same thing with Manny Laredo, suicide in the same uh, second inning for the second run. And those two runs held up uh, throughout the course of the game. Yeah, you know, Harrison ended up uh, he ended up driving in runs in both games over the first RBI of his career. It was it was funny because uh, and again the second game he suicide squeezed yeah. once once again and we were able to do that. Um, so you know he's uh, he's come out of nowhere. He was just a walk on. Uh, we opened up the tryouts to all the students at Pan Am. He he came out, uh, made the squad, and he's uh, really come a long way uh, offensively, defensively. Uh, great team player, uh, great teammate, um, great young man. So I'm very happy for him. Uh, he's worked hard, um, and I'm happy that uh, he had a day like he had yesterday. Well, he has that day, and you know, you mentioned the squeezes. You got a bunch in between the two games. You got, I think, like three runs, four runs off of suicide squeezes. You got in that uh, second game. You got three runs off of wild pitches, including Cole Lankar scored from second on a wild pitch. That was exciting. You know, you don't see you don't see that a whole lot. Um, and you're absolutely right. From second base, wild pitch. Uh, the ball careened off to the side, um, and, and credit Cole. I mean, ran hard from the beginning, uh, rounded third, and saw where the ball was and waved him in, and he just kept going, uh, and he scored on a wall pitch from second. But uh, I thought our bunny game was good. We slashed and run. Uh, Scott Mercer did a good job with that, get guys first to third. Um, so overall, uh, that second game, that 7-3 to three win, um, our pitching um, did a nice job uh, defensively. There was an inning there we got a little bit of shaky. We should have uh, got out of that inning without any runs. Um, but we held on, um, and we got the uh, doubleheader sweep. 
Yeah, I mean, two errors total in 18 innings, and I think that's a, uh, you know, there had been some shaky innings recently, but this is, uh, you see your defense starting to come around too? You know what, I am, uh, I'm very pleased with the way that uh, Chewy, who was supposed to be our starting second baseman this year, um, he was our shortstop last year. We moved him over to short, um, and he's looked fabulous. I mean, if he would have looked this good last year, we would have never moved him out of shortstop. Um, but second base is definitely his more natural position, but he's really played lights out at short. Um, you know, Mercer uh, played good defense yesterday. Overall, the outfielders did a nice job. You know, Mike Harrison, again, uh, 18 innings, not one pass ball, and he's a guy that uh, really hasn't caught a whole lot. So um, basically yesterday, both games was a you know, total team effort uh, with the offense, the defense, um, and the pitching staff coming together. Yeah, uh, you, you got through the first game. Uh, you only had to use three pitchers. And in the second game, four guys pitched about two innings each, and uh, your staff will be still nice and fresh for the weekend. Yeah, every, everybody's ready to go. Uh, Tuesday, obviously, we have uh, today um, and tomorrow. So everybody pitched about two innings. The only one that went a little bit deeper was, uh, was Clay. Um, so he probably won't be able to go to it Saturday or Sunday. Um, Alex threw three innings, but uh, we're probably going to start him on Sunday. But everybody should be, you know, got game action, which you can't duplicate that in your squad. So everybody, as far as uh, uh, the pitching staff, uh, should be available for this uh, coming weekend at North Dakota. And, uh, you know, you got some of the, the freshmen in there again. Uh, you know, you had three freshmen uh, pitching in uh, your second game and one sophomore. And it just shows you just how much talent you have on some of these younger pitchers that you'll have for years to come. Yeah, we're really, we're really excited about our, our young guys, especially on, uh, on the pitching staff. You know, you, you mentioned the, the three freshmen, Lamb, uh, Martinez, and Jackson, all, all pitched yesterday, pitched well. Um, Andrew Padron is only a sophomore. Um, so we're excited about the, uh, the young freshmen, um, especially with the arms, and that's what you want to have. I mean, if you can have talented arms like that and have them for four, around for four years, um, you're going to be in good shape. So uh, we're excited about the future, and, um, you know, those three guys threw well yesterday. Over the weekend, you took on Northern Colorado and uh, dropped two out of three, but every one, but both of those games, that you, even the ones you didn't win, you had a great chance to win. You had the lead in the ninth inning in game one, and then, uh, game three brought the you got the tying run in scoring position brought the winning run to the play in the ninth. I thought we, we definitely should have won. <clears throat> Jonah two out of three, um, and maybe three if we if we kind of execute the second game a little bit. Uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate. Andrew Padron has been really throwing the ball lights out of the bullpen for us. He's entitled uh, to have a bad game, um, and that's what happened to him on Sunday. We had a we had the lead and we lost it, um, and you know we gave up. Uh, the game there but you know he's been one of our best arms all year and you know what he's he's human he's gonna you know come up short a little bit but um, glad to see him bounce back um, and threw the ball well yesterday so is that the kind of thing you think he'll be able to build off of and get back into that <clears throat> late inning role well he's a guy that you can use anywhere I mean you can start him you can use him in long relief you can use him as a setup you, you can use him as a matchup right right guy um, you can use him as a closer um, and again, as we mentioned earlier, he's only a sophomore, so we're excited about Andrew, uh, you know, about George, Jackson, uh, Martinez. Uh, I like the, uh, the core of young arms that we have, and they're only going to get better. Uh, over the last week, uh, you know, entering the doubleheader, Victor Garcia Jr. hit uh, something like 438 for the week. He got on base at a 600 clip, slugged about 1,000. and uh, Not too shabby. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, enough doubles to uh, give you a season's worth if you're, uh, if you're me. And uh, he had like nine <laughs> RBI over the week. <laughs> so uh, what, what have you seen out of the way he's swinging it lately? He, he, you know what? He really had a good weekend. Um, and, it, it would, and it's ironic because, uh, you know, yesterday we go into Corpus Christi, um, and it's a tough place to play. I mean, it's, the field is uh, it's out in the open. It's, it's a tough place to play and, uh, and go and win. Um, you know, two games, it's even tougher. Um, but, you know, our best hitter didn't get a hit all day. Um, yet uh, we were able to win two. And that's what teams need, you know, good teams do. Um, you're not always going to, you can't count on that one guy. Um, there's got to be different guys uh, to come up, step up, and do the job. And Victor has done that, uh, you know, throughout the season for us. You know, he's, he's gotten games and series that he's been really hot and helped us win. The same with Cole Ankar. Obviously, Logan has been steady. Um, Corey Davis is beginning to swing the bat really good. Um, Chewy was swinging the bat really good all the way from the uh, Sacramento State Series. So, um, you know, we're, we're having different guys step up. Um, and again, I thought uh, Northern Colorado, we should have won two out of three. If, you, if you're able to score seven runs, you should win. Um, and, uh, you know, we did that. But unfortunately, our pitching falter, uh, faltered a little bit, and so did our defense. 
but it was uh, it was a good way yesterday to head into uh, North uh, North Dakota after uh, those two wins at Corpus Christi. Yeah, the, there's your pitching. It's firing on cylinders. Mm -hmm. The defense has gotten better. The hitting. I mean, entering the doubleheader, you had been scoring about eight runs per game. So. Uh, it kind of seems like everything's starting to fall together with uh, those final three weekends coming. I think so. I agree. Uh, now that, you know, we know that we can count on some of the arms. And, and again, we've had to really throw those, those guys in there. One guy we haven't mentioned that's also a freshman on for us is Justin Quinones that has done a good job. Um, you know, they were supposed to be bullpen arms um, coming into the year. Um, and they really stepped up as freshmen um, and done a really good job for us. So it, it's a good way to head into North Dakota. Yeah, uh, Justin Quinones, he started last Saturday. Uh, ended up going uh, four innings, but he just allowed the two runs and three hits. He struck out four. What did you see out of him? You know what? It was it was just so hot, um, and he, he was on short rest. He hit, he threw on Tuesday a few innings um, yeah. just to get him some work in. Um, so we wanted to make sure that uh, you know just if we're gonna err, let's err before um, you know he gets in trouble. Give him some confidence, which he needs as a freshman, and that's and that's what we did. He threw four good innings. Uh, we had some good arms in the bullpen, uh, and we bought them in. Um, and they did a nice job for us. Blake English in the bullpen last weekend. He ended up pitching seven innings of relief on Sunday. What did you see out of him? Um, probably one of the better times. I mean, he's had some good games early in the year. But uh, I, I think uh, this past weekend, uh, uh, he's thrown the ball. He threw the ball a lot better uh, than he has in the past uh, previous two or three weeks. So hopefully um, he gets it going. He's a senior. We need him to uh, pitch well. Um, and going into the North Dakota uh, series, um, you know, from what we saw last week in Jonah, I think uh, he's figured it out. Well, that's a that's a good sign as you enter uh, North Dakota. It's uh, the start of, well, continuation of an eight-game road trip, six in a row in the WAC on the road. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a field you've been to uh, before. I think when they – I'm not sure if it was the first time they played there. I remember two years ago you went. It was their home opening series. It was in April and because uh, they don't get to play a lot of home games being in – North Dakota, so uh, certainly a place close. they have an advantage. Yeah, it, it was definitely. Cold. <laughs> I remember um, going and you know behind the outfield, right behind the outfield, they had a chain link fence, and it was like three or four feet of snow, which they had just cleared <laughs> the field. Um, it was cold. Um, it was cold. It was uh, miserable, actually. Um, so I think now, um, being towards the end of April, hopefully uh, the weather's a little bit better. At least we're, we're hoping that it's going to be better. I haven't checked the weather yet, but I'm sure that. Uh, the weatherman slash uh, sportscaster here, uh, information whiz, will, will get me the weather. But we're looking forward to it. The temperatures, uh, will be the low of negative uh, 40, but a high of 120. You're, you're killing, killing the kids. There's a 50% chance of precipitation, but a 50% chance it'll be perfectly sunny. There we go. It's kind of like what, when I turn on the weather down here. Hey, here we go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a little bit warmer, I think, anyways. Um, and, and that's nice because, you know, to play in 30-degree weather. Um, cloudy, overcast, it's, it's just not, uh, it's not good baseball weather. Uh, over the weekend, you uh, had a couple of your guys honored at the Student Athlete Awards banquet. Logan Landon, uh, both the breakthrough athlete of the year and uh, the male uh, co-student athlete of the year. No, no doubt that, that uh, Logan deserves, uh, you know, those awards. Uh, I mean, from where he came from as a pitcher, having the kind of year he's having, that was, that was a nice uh, award for him as a uh, breakout athlete or the male breakout athlete of the year. Um, and I, you know, and I thought he's had a, good, a very good year, um, so that uh, he would uh, at least be in the competition for the uh, the male athlete of the year. But uh, I want to congratulate all of our student athletes, uh, both males and females, um, uh, for having uh, you know those that won the awards and even those that didn't win the awards. They've had great years. Uh, they've been great representatives. So uh, to all the student athletes uh, uh, here at Pan Am, congratulations and congratulations to all the coaches. And finally, looking at some of your alumni, I saw the other day that Dustin Knight had been promoted to uh, Single A Augusta in the Sally League. So uh, he's at full season A ball, just like Sam Street is. In fact, they're in the same league. Knight in his first two appearances, uh, two innings, six, uh, five strikeouts out of the six outs he's recorded. Uh, no walks, pretty good start. Tremendous, <laughs> tremendous young man. Um, I mean, really came a long way with us uh, from where he, we got him um, after junior college to where he ended up. Uh, tireless worker, Jonah, uh, great individual. Um, again, has the stuff, I think, uh, uh, to do well in pro ball. Um, and he's off to a good start. As you mentioned, just got promoted uh, to the uh, South Atlantic League. He's off to a good start, so hopefully uh, he keeps it going. Dylan Badura, another former pitcher, pitched at the same time as Knight, a lefty. He dropped me a line the other day, told me he just signed with the uh – with a team in the East Coast Baseball League, it's a new independent league, so he'll get a chance to, to be playing pro ball as well. 
I think Dylan, um, and, you know, un until uh, he can't uh, play anymore, he's going to keep trying to play. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we wish him luck, obviously. I think that uh, I think he's going to be successful in the journalism business or whatever business he decides to. But like I told the guys, once you get your degree, Jonah, um, play until you can't play anymore because your career is so short, it's going to come to an end. So um, if somebody wants you, um, play. Biggest thing is, okay, you have your degree, so if things don't work out, you can always fall back. But degree first, and then once you get that, um, any professional team that wants you to play, play because you're, you know, your playing career is so, so small that uh, you just can't do that forever. Well, you mentioned his uh, potential journalism career. He is actually getting published in the Players' Tribune, that Derek Jeter uh, sports media website thing. Um, the article should be coming out sometime in the next few days or weeks about life in independent baseball. All right. so, he's going to have a great taste now with that Eastern League independent ball. So uh, he's going to have some uh, really, really good information to, to, to write down. So, um, you know, he's a great kid. Um, you know, it was a pleasure coaching him while he was here with us. Good student athlete. Um, so we wish him the best. Well, the Bronx are back in action this week, and they take on North Dakota Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at, I think, 5, 3, and 12 p.m. Central Time. Check UTPABronx.com. For your links for broadcast, live stats, and all of that jazz. He's Benny Matrani. He's the head coach of the UTPA baseball team. He's Jonah Goldberg. The information wins. We'll be back with you next week. This is Bronx Baseball.